Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Veeresh. In the continuation to our series on understanding Apache Spark's uh, Delta Lake feature, uh, this is the part two. I'm sure you must have checked the part one wherein we discussed primarily uh, what is the Delta Lake feature, uh, what are the different aspects, different functionalities and uh, different utilities it provides. And at the same time, we looked into the demo that how it uh, makes the entire transaction as atomic. So in this particular video, we'll look uh, uh, some of the remaining features that we couldn't cover in the, uh, in the part one. And uh, we'll also look into the demo and I'll also share the code snippets across for the demo, uh, which I use for the demo. And uh, before I go start, I would like to request to all my viewers that do like, comment, share uh, to the videos and also subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of the latest videos. So guys, let's start. So if you remember, this is the full list of all the functionalities, features provided as part of the Delta Lake. Uh, and the major ones out of them are asset transactions on the Spark world. We have DML support, delete, update and merge. Schema, information in, schema enforcement is also provided at the right time itself, which we discussed in the first video, and the time travel. So as part of the first video, we covered the detailed demo of the asset transactions, how they are supported onto this part. And in this video, let's start with the DML support, the delete, update, and merge functionality that has been provided on to the underlying, underlying uh, distributed data storage through the Spark. Uh, APIs and functionalities. So guys, let's jump on to the uh, demo for these three features that we'll cover as part of this particular video. So let's open up our Databricks notebook. And the Delta Lake support for DML gives all the handles to do any sort of CRUD operations in terms of uh, delete, update, or also do the absurd or merge into the existing data files or data that is written to any sort of underlying data storage, right? So if we look into this particular example, what we're trying to do is we have created one data frame, right? And in this one, I'm simply saving this data frame to the underlying lake. I've connected it to the Azure Data Lake and it'll create me one data frame and save it as a part key file into the like and if you see the format here we use is the delta we didn't do that right dot parky but instead we use the delta lake format which is a search form so now if we go to our lake you know so we have this employee data set created and as we also checked in that it'll have the delta log which kind of uh, carries the information about all the transactions all the transactions that we have done and maintain the listing of the schema JSON file, right? Now, let's try to perform some sort of delete operation and let's see how that are materialized onto uh, the system by the Delta Lake. So what we have done here is in this example, if you see, we have first created a Delta Lake for this data that we have just stored onto our lake, right? And this is the way you can convert uh, or you can read a data frame or the underlying distributed data as a delta table rather than as a plain data frame. And then on this delta table instance, we'll have a handle to run all these APIs of delete, update, absurd, merge, etc. Okay. So what we are essentially trying to do here is we're trying to delete an employee name entry, uh, which is John, right? If you look at the example, we have uh, three entries in our data frame. Display. Right. If we do a display, we have three entries in our data frame and then, right? So let's run this command to delete this particular record. And let's see how the data is stored and managed by Delta Lake under the hood. Fair enough, the delete operation is under the way. So 
so it's completed successfully if i'll try to read the same data now with the delta format so read is also into a delta format so what i get out here is i do not have that record the first record where the employee name was john it's not available and let's see what has actually happened into the persistent storage so if we try to refresh it now we have two part file we discussed this in the first part as well so the second part file is the one where we only have two records and the first one is the where we had three records and corresponding to each one we have two json files right which are indicated to our so this is the first file this is the first file if you see here in the first file you say it has said add this particular part file right because that was the first operation we simply created some data correct now when we applied the operation of delete what has happened under the hood is it has created one more parky file and in the delta log it has created a separate json file right and in this json file if you see now it would have one add entry and what entry to delete right that is the remove entry for the previous parky file and one add entry for the new parky file with the two records and remove uh, entry for the parky file which had three records right so when we do that read operation using the format as delta it has picked up the latest json file it has picked up all the json files and collated that eventually which file is finally needs to be added right and that is where the data is rendered from correct now that's how the delete is performed now let's see how we can do the update the mechanism to get the handle on the delta table so that we can perform delta dml operations remain the same delta table dot for path we've given this part and we've given the lake path for our data correct now this data has only two records as we can see mike and gary right and what we are essentially trying to do is uh, trying to update the employee id for the mic if you see right now the employee id is 2 here as part of this code i have run this command update where employee name is equal to mic and what we need to change is employee id to this literal 265 let's run this command and let's see what happens let's run this now when we we'll try to run this command right under the hood one more parky file would be created right and a corresponding json file which will have an entry to remove the previous one and add this new parky file right now if i try to display see the display the mic the id is changed if we try to go to the link right and do a refresh we'll see one more json file for corresponding to this update transaction that we did and we if you go to the data path we'll see one more parky file right so every time a new transaction is maintained the entire history the entire audit history of the transaction is maintained so that it also gives us a handle how we can do the time travel that we'll just look in into the demo so that's our update now let's see how we can do a merge it's pretty commonly used I think one of the most handy commands which is pretty commonly used in the data warehouse kind of world and that similar command we can use similar functionality we can use into the uh, spark world spark and hadoop world now with the data lake so here i have created a new uh, data frame so that i can merge it with the existing employee table that we have the schema remains the same so i've added three more records out here right and what I'm essentially trying to see, I'm just trying to merge this data, right? When I say merge this data, if in case it's a new record, it will do the insert. And if in case it's, it's on the same existing ID, where we put the check of the merge, right? Then in that case, it would be an update. So primarily this merge command is the absurd functionality that we are trying, uh, trying to achieve. The handle to get the delta table remain the same. Now what we see is we have to data table as employee and then we call this command merge and this is the incoming data that we need to merge with the existing employee data that we have in the lake 
right? So this when we say is a new employee data that is coming in. And the check we are doing is on the employee name. So if the employee name matches, then it will be updated. If it doesn't match, then probably it would be an insert, right? So if you see right now, <clears throat> for Gary, it would be an update. And for other two records that are coming for Ranjan and Ajay, that will be an insert. And for Gary, it would be a update, right? So how many records do we already have, right? We already have two records. So one would be update, right? And remaining two would be inserts. So total, we would have four records by the end of merge statement, right? So let's try to see what is the syntax of the merge statement. The first one is the merge condition that we have, that is on the employee name. And when matched, what we're gonna do is we'll update the employee ID and we'll also update the employee name. And when not match, we are simply doing the insert all. Then in that case, if we insert, and if the name matches, then it would be a update. So let's run this. If I run it and do a display, that's what the output comes out to be, where the Gary is updated with the new employee ID, right? And we have total four records. Uh, Naranjan and, and Ajay are the new inserts, right? And the mic one remains as is. And if you see the Gary's previous ID here was three, correct? But the incoming data that we have to be merged is coming with the name Gary with the ID as 88. So that's what is being done by the merge command. Pretty handy command in the data warehouse world. Used, I think, very heavily, correct? Fair enough. This is the output of a merge command. So this is what we have in terms of the DML offerings from the Delta Lake perspective. We have the update, we have delete, and we have absurd in the form of merge. And this is the syntax of the merge, which is pretty simple how we write it in the SQL world. Right. Now let's move forward. That's on the DML side. Let's look into the demo for the schema enforcement at the right time itself. So what we are essentially trying to say, say without Delta Lake, even if your, your schemas are mismatches, your write would not cry. So probably whenever you will try to read that data, uh, that the schema at uh, schema inference at read time will come into the picture. And if in case there is schema mismatches, it will cry at the read time. But here Delta Lake has given a much more initial handle to do that schema enforcement at the right time itself. And, and, and obviously that's a more robust way to make our data more qualitative and perform the sanity of the schemas, right? So what we are essentially trying to do here is we have created one more data frame. This time we have three columns. We have also added a column for employee age, right? And if we try to do this insertion into the same employee table data that we have already persisted, which only have two columns for employee ID and employee name. So without Delta, it will go as is, but with Delta, it'll give, it is giving me an error which says, a schema mismatch detected, which obviously is the right, which obviously is correct. Now, uh, now to go it through, now to go it through to make it right uh, with that, what we can do, we can use an additional command to the right, where I says, dot option merge schema as true. So this command will say the Spark and the Data Lake system to merge the two schemas and probably now the schema would be updated with three columns, right? If I simply go and try to run this command now, again, so just put two dots, I'll just remove it. Now let's try to run it. So I it will update the merge the schemas. Now if I try to read it from there, so probably I'll see the three columns. Let's see. Yeah, it went through now. This time it doesn't give me that syntax check for schema mismatch. Let's see what kind of data representation do we have now and you see. It uses the command overwrite, so it has overridden the existing data. Even if in case it would have been append, I would have seen the null values for employee age for the previous records. So if in case you want to do the merge schema, 
this is what we'll have to use otherwise the delta lake will do that schema enforcement at the right time itself fair enough makes sense right <sighs> correct now let's move forward and see how the time travel thing comes into the picture as we have seen the underlying ethos how delta lake is managing that entire history of all the transactions in the form of those json files which keep track of what is coming what what kind of change is coming as part of an individual transactions so time travel gives us an option that we can go a little back in history and could view that snapshot and could get a lever or a handle to that data data snapshot as well so if we that's the handle to get the delta table right that remains the same and if we fire this command to look into the history we can very clearly say that it gives us the history in the form that we have performed some writes and then we perform some delete and then we perform some updates so it is giving me the entire history of all the transactions performed correct now there are two options available to look into the previous or the historical snapshot of the data one is with the version right if you see into the history there is the first column which is maintain in version and we can use that version to look into the snapshot of that version of data fair enough so if i go here and fire, fire the command read from the delta option version as of so this is the syntax of this that we i want to reach the version as of the first version where i have written with three records right and i want to load the data from this particular lake location right if i fire this command i'll get all my three records where we started from right we started with three records with employee ids as 1 to 3 correct and similarly i can check change the version and that will give me the next snapshot if i do or delete one it so will give me two records where the john would have been deleted so that's the syntax to kind of do the time travel using the version there is another method they have given to do the time travel and that with the time stamp as of here we have version as of here we have time stamp as of and here we can give the time stamp and based on time stamp that snapshot of the data would be supplemented back right yes and for look a particular uh, say just trying to understand it from the fact that if we want to read the data for version 0 with the time stamp mechanism we'll have to give the time stamp such that it is between these two time stamps that any time stamp which will supplement as part of time as of which is between these two time stamp time stamps it will give you the version 0 similarly if you want to see the version 1 give the time stamp which is between these two time stamp values right so anything between these two will give you version 1 and 0 correct so that's what we have in the time travel thing it's a pretty handy technique if you want to go back to the history and see that what was the snapshot of your data at that particular time stamp or you can fire this command to check the history of your particular delta table and get the handle of the particular versions and then you can do version as of pass in pass in the absolute version number and you'll get the uh, data from that snapshot so guys that's it what we have in this particular video right we have kind of looked in three aspects three more features of the delta lake the dml support upsurge deletes schema enforcement at the right time and the time travel with two options of version as of and time stamp as of so guys that's it in this particular video have a great day ahead don't forget to subscribe the channel bye bye